What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're talking about how to be stoic without becoming a robot, okay? Without being emotionless and uh, just feeling numb, okay? And let me tell you, that's not stoicism. Stoicism isn't meant to make you a robot. And one thing that stoicism is not is some cool, trendy thing that you kind of brand yourself with. It's not an ideology. It's not a religion, okay? And I know it sounds cool, and it has become trendy. There's guys making YouTube video, YouTube video after stoicism. And the thing, uh, you know, the thing I don't like about that, and I'm not mentioning anyone personally, because I've done it too, but I noticed that when you start to focus on one thing, one subject, you almost flesh it out so much that it becomes complicated. And it's supposed to be simple. It's not supposed to be something you overthink and overanalyze. No, man. Stoicism is to is necessary if you don't want to suffer and if you want to good, live a good life. It's not some macho, yeah, I'm stoic. No, that's not how it is. Okay, so first off, let's dive into how it serves our purpose. And I'm just going to tell you a story, something that happened to me the other day that, uh, man, it tested my my fortitude. And I almost snapped, dude. So I was at the gym, new gym. I went with my girlfriend and I'm showing her around. I'm trying to get her to sign up because I think that she'll like it. And so I tell her where the the women's bathroom is. And I'm standing outside the hall of the women's bathroom. And I'm like, here it is. She goes inside and she's like talking to me and I'm talking to her out, outside and my voice is kind of booming. It's projecting. I'm like, hey, how's it in there? And uh, this lady comes out and she ends up going to the front desk and telling management that I was in the women's restroom walking around. And one of the trainers comes up to me and he's like, hey man, what's going on? I'm like, what are you talking about? What do you mean what's going on? He's like, you can't be doing that. I'm like, doing what? He's like, you were in the women's bathroom. And I'm like, bro, no, I wasn't. So. Right then, I'm, I'm like, hey, well, is this bitch? She just told on me for going in the women's restroom, and I was never in there. So that, like, really, you know, I'm triggered, dude. I'm, I'm like, this, I'm, I'm, lo- I'm getting angry. And, and I was like, I was pretty livid, you know, because that's a, that's a big accusation, dude. That can get you in trouble. I'm like, this woman really has something against me mid-aged woman, tattoos everywhere. I'm not judging her, I'm just saying, man, she looked like a hardcore feminist, all right? She had something going on where uh, maybe she had a bad day. That's how I, I was like, maybe she just had a really bad day. But you know what, I'm not gonna let that slide. I'm gonna clear things up here. So the next time that I saw her at the gym, which was like two days later, I, I was like, look, I'm not just gonna sit this, I gotta hash this out. So I went up to her and you could just see she looked at me like this. She rolled her eyes. And I'm like, her headphones were in. And I was like this. I'm like, you know, take out your headphones. And uh, I'm like, hey, listen. We work out of the same gym. I don't want any beef with you. And the other day, I realized that you told some people that I was in the women's bathroom. And I never was. And I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable. And she started to break. You could tell, like, she was like, well, I heard you. And I'm like, listen, I'm sorry if I made you uncomfortable, okay? And you could see, like, I was being nice, kind, looking her in the eyes. She started to break down. And uh, then my ego got in the way. And my anger flared up. I was like, you fucking bitch. Like, in my mind, I was like, how dare you, you know? And I said, don't you. I was like, I don't appreciate you doing that. I never do that again, all right? It's on camera. I was never in the women's bathroom. Don't ever do it again. And then she snapped. She was like, oh, that's it. I'm I'm telling, man, I'm going, I'm talking to them. This is conversation is over. She put her headphones back in and I was just like, I ruined it because I could have just been kind, killed her with the kindness and uh, made peace. So for me, you know, I realized at that point, Okay, my ego flared up, got in the way, I could have just been kind. And now I have to live with how am I, there's tension in the gym whenever we're there. And now her man's there, you know, whatnot. But for me, it's just like, I've realized now, I'm going to let go of that anger because that anger doesn't serve me. 
okay? See, I still feel emotions, and this is how it ties into the stoic mindset. I feel stuff, guys, but I've, I have this, over, this overarching view of life that some stuff just doesn't matter, some problems I don't need to have. I can eliminate a lot of suffering if I, if it doesn't, you know, if the emotion doesn't serve me. Anger in the gym, anger at this woman doesn't serve me. Maybe she's had a bad life. Maybe she's been molested. Maybe she's lost her job. Who knows what's going on? Maybe she had a, a failed, uh, you know, uh, damn pregnancy. I don't know. Okay, so I'm just going to let go of the anger because it doesn't serve me. And that's what I want you guys to realize is you should look at the emotions that you're having and um, try to eliminate the ones that aren't providing any benefit to you. It was like back when I was in car sales, you know, I had a, someone try to cheat me off a deal, a huge deal by the way. And I'm like, look, I'm not taking this. That's another thing. Being stoic doesn't mean that you sit back and you just let life beat you up. No, you try to control what you can control and what you can't realize you can control this. Okay. But don't be, don't be overly agreeable and overly nice. That's not being a man. Sometimes you need to sack up, grab your nuts and handle stuff. When people decide to treat you bad, you speak up when a deal, you know, when this deal was going on, I'm like, I went straight to the manager. I'm like, listen, I know you guys know about this. There's no way that this guy's getting this deal because I did all the work. He's not getting it. Okay. I'm not letting it happen. And he's like, Oh, okay. Okay. I understand. I was kind, but I was up front. I speak the truth. I speak what I know to be true. And <clears throat> that will get you out of a lot of tricky predicaments because uh, you often find yourself in a pickle where all it's really, you know, meant for you to do or what would solve the problem is picking up the phone, calling, going to that person, having a crucial conversation, telling the truth, telling what's right. Okay. People are always trying to work underneath, man, you know, slithering, snaky, like, but when you come out, tell the truth, you can just handle problems. Okay. That's really what's it about. Just, just, uh, taking the initiative in your own life, making things happen. And so <clears throat> what I like to say with the, with stoicism is look, man, you're not meant to be a robot. And this is something that's given me meaning in my life is realizing that we're operating inside of a world that is similar to the matrix. And if you haven't seen the matrix, you need to watch it because it's a perfect analogy for what we're talking about here. The matrix is this, is this world where everyone is sort of is, is used to being a slave to their emotions. They're used to consumerism. They're used to greed and lust and anger and all these things cause us to suffer. It causes us to go to war. It causes us to hate our neighbors and be unhappy. It causes us to um, be mean to a lot of people. And we're in, stuck inside this matrix, the, the mindset, the hierarchies, the, the status, the always consume, always got to get more, got to get the nicest car, got to be this way. It's uh, the cause of a lot of fake people. And so I've kind of realized in my own life, like I've see, I've sort of been maybe just a little bit enlightened. And what I, I don't mean that in a prideful way. I mean that I've seen that I can avoid suffering if I don't attach myself to all my emotions, <clears throat> if I don't attach myself to all the outcomes, if I don't get, um, if I don't hold on too tightly to any one thing. I've been through some hard times. I've lost my parents. I've been alone. I've been isolated. It wasn't fun. I've learned how to make myself very unhappy. And so what I had to do is teach myself how to be happy. I actually had to train my brain to find the happiness in little things because my natural default setting was to wake up in the morning and complain and feel like a victim and feel like there was nothing but storm clouds and dark days overhead. And as time has went on, I've realized that the matrix, the, the program that we live in in modern society has gotten so good that most people aren't even suffering anymore. It's like, <clears throat> excuse me, it's gotten so good that life has become so comfortable. Our problems are eliminated. We have an abundance of everything that you feel numb because you have no problems to solve. You you're stuck in this matrix programming. It's comfortable. You're, you got social media and Netflix 
and all this stuff constantly packed in your head there's never time for peace the only time you're at peace or you're you're alone is because you're forced to be isolated because you know what we're an isolated generation we don't have close friends we don't have close bonds we don't have tribes and isolation i've learned is bad when you're forced into it all right people in solitary confinement go crazy uh, if you're willing to isolate yourself for some time you can actually find peace and we've learned that in the previous book on the stranger in the wild or the, the about the last hermit uh, lived there for 27 years but isolation by itself is is bad if you don't go in there willingly okay and a lot of us are like that so no wonder that we feel numb that's not being stoic man that's letting yourself become a part of the program and letting and and not taking responsibility for your life and not solving problems that, that's the thing we're so comfortable we don't have any problems to solve so what happens when we're so comfortable is that everything becomes a problem okay and I think that in order to have some meaning in your life you got to be a solver of problems you've got to be willing to solve a few problems and that's when you find happiness is when you can pick your problems not when everything in life is a problem not when you're just laying down and just getting beat upside the head by life that's not that's not a good life okay that's and then you can be stoic all you want you're gonna beat up no dude you gotta still fight and just realize you know some of these emotions don't serve me so, and, and I don't have to suffer um, I don't have to suffer all the time just because I can't get this shit together in here okay and one of the things that's really been part of something that's given me meaning is being someone in that can wake other people up that can shake people out of the program that can show people that you don't have to suffer let's see if we're still recording that can show another human being or a loved one that you don't have to suffer as much as you may be right now and that you can see the bigger picture and the way that I do that is a lot of times with humor because a humor sort of breaks apart your your idea of what is reality and a lot of times I get in trouble for this and sometimes in relationships like my girlfriend it seems like I don't care about a lot of stuff and it's not that I don't care it's that I choose to look at things that that are usually small and I, I see the the overwhelming bigger pictures like hey we're on a little planet here in the middle of space and everything that we're crying about and complaining about all this shit doesn't matter and so part of my life is taken on this this um it's like Morpheus like I I want to show people the truth whether that be through words or whether that be through humor and I and that's given me a lot of fun and just uh it's a, uh, enjoyment is is being that solid person when there's chaos in relationships or among family or among friends and I, obviously I'm still working on it because I'm trying to master my own you know desire to just go with the wind and follow my emotions but man I don't know if you guys can relate to this for instance like I was at the mall the other day with her and I was something didn't fit her I was like yeah you might have to lose some some chub and there was like five young girls there like high school girls working and one of the girls went oh, what did you just say and she was like oh, I had an eating problem what if if my boyfriend ever said that I'm like yeah well you know that's we're different okay or something like you know some stupid but it's just so funny is how people react to some of the, the this stuff man it's like come on guys you got to shake people out of that that's what Morpheus was in that major he's like I can show you the door okay but I can't make you go through it's your decision if you're gonna go through or not he was like here's the red pill you go you take the red pill I'll show you how far the rabbit hole goes you take the blue pill you stay here a lot of people are staying here in the blue pill and they're comfortable they're not solving problems they're getting angry they're getting upset they're not going anywhere they're not they're not enjoying life to the fullest okay um, Jesus Jesus was someone that showed other people that you can escape the suffering from your sins okay he, he he was like going around teaching people you can you can follow me okay except this that I've come to you know set you free from this stuff you don't got to suffer the Buddha same thing the cessation of suffering is attainable okay uh, if you don't attach yourself to all these desires and it's it's a uh, crazy to think man like we can live our lives as Jesus as Morpheus as a as 
being prof prophetic, telling other people, hey man, you don't gotta suffer, we can be those people. And so I would say, if you're lacking meaning, if you're feeling numb in life, aim to be a person that can help set other people free and see the bigger picture. Because it's not all about us, man, it's really not. And uh, it says in the Bible, you know, you must become just like a child to enter the kingdom of heaven. Heaven's here, man, heaven's here on earth, another verse. And remember when you were a kid, you didn't have all these, these preconceived notions and lusts and envy and greed and hate. It's like, man, master yourself now, become like a kid when you are an adult. Be it back to that childlike state and bring it to other people and, and it'll make your life really cool, man. All right? So uh, let's wrap this up. And just remember, you know, if you are feeling numb and, and easily upset, then maybe you should focus on the basics. Follow the monk mode philosophy, man. Eat well, sleep good, train hard, uh, obviously move your body, you know, get outside of your head when it comes to other people. Make them, if, if you feel weird around other people, think about that everyone cares more about themselves. <laughs> no one's really paying attention to you so closely that they remember all your flaws or they remember your awkwardness. You know, if you really want to connect with other people, ask them how they are. Think about them, make them comfortable. And that's a great way to connect. But obviously, man, we should, we should do the basics, okay? We should solve problems without letting everything become a problem, picking a certain set of problems that we attack and we enjoy solving and we enjoy creating our life, okay? Not getting swept away by the endless, you know, by all this illusion that, you know, everyone, uh, the media, like the news, we're always in wartime, everything's bad. No, man, no, it, it, things are pretty good, all right? And uh, be a person that can help bring, you know, a glimpse of enlightenment to other people. I would really say that is, have, has been a thing in my life where, you know, why not share the happiness with other people? When you see someone else stuck, you see them, the program has got them, dude, help shake them out of it, help bring them out, okay? And become a childlike in spirit, rekindle that childlike spirit and it'll set you free. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon and uh, I will see you soon also. All right, let me know what you think. And uh, we'll talk. Peace.